Warning. You are now tuned in to Seven Mile Radio. Seven Mile Radio. Warning. You are now tuned in to Seven Mile Radio. Seven Mile Radio. Warning. You are now tuned in to Seven Mile Radio. Seven Mile Radio. What's going on? Truth Talk Radio with host Judah Woke Ace, T. Mezzle the Great, and Mark from Seven Mile Radio. Today's special guest, Minister Freedom Allah. What's going on, brother? Man, peace and love, brother. Thank you for having me. Definitely appreciate being here, man. Peace. So tell us a little bit um, about yourself and the um, People's Action um, group that's going on in the city of, um, of Detroit. Um, well, you know, me personally, man, I'm... Uh, um, I wouldn't, I'm a, I'm, I will say I'm an activist, um, a leader, an educator, a teacher, man. You know, I, I got the knowledge of myself about eight years ago. Um, and since then, man, I've been a very active member, a very active citizen of the 5% nation of guys and nerves. Um, and not only with that, um, over the past uh, five years since I've been back in Detroit, man, from college, I've been doing a lot of uh, local local community work, um, you know, because it's, it's our culture in the 5%, man, the teaching yeah. the community. Um, so this is almost like a second nature to me, you know, so, you know, from working with different organizations from New Era Detroit to now the, the People's Action Committee, um, basically what we're doing, man, we, we know we're a grassroots organization, man, that's, that's non-religious, that's, you know, non-secular, that we just, you know, particularly focused on, you know, trying to do, do some of the work um, in the community, man, that's going to make a change, you know, we can't do it all, um, but we know that we can take the, the, the few hands that we got, man, and do something positive. That's oh, right. That's, that's what's right. Up. That's what's up. Uh, how, how can the people get involved with the uh, with the movement that you? Uh... Um, many ways, bro. You know, we we got uh we got several programs that we got going on that we we keep some going on. You know, just like everybody should, man. If you if you really organizing, um, if you are really moving and you really shaking in the city of Detroit, man, you should be doing something, uh, frequently. Um, so what we doing right now is a program that's called uh Adopt a Block. Okay. Yeah, the Adopt a Block program. Um, what we doing is we going we actually be doing we got one this Sunday. Um, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna be in the, in the Joy Road area, the Joy Road and Southfield area. Okay. And basically, what we do, man, just like the the name of the program says, we literally adopt the community. You know, we adopt a, a three block radius for a few hours, cut the grass, pick up the trash, talk to everybody. You know, uh, knock on doors, reach out to the community. Um, you know, I'll be out there doing some teaching. Uh, on the mic or on the bullhorn or whatever, interacting with people, getting the energy going. Um, and it's just it's just a positive program, man. You know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we the problem is so big um, and the issues are so big. Mm -hmm. And in order to tackle a lot of that, man, we got to start with, with, with cleaning our own house. You know, and a lot of times to get people to want to clean up the house, you got to get them motivated. You know, just like when your mama asks you to clean up and she don't get on you, or say something to you, or really spark you, or really move you to really do something, you'll never do it. So it's kind of that same way. You know, a lot of these people in our communities, they're young people raising young people, um, you know, and a lot of them have never seen or heard or felt an initiative uh, or why to do something positive or to want to want to do something positive yeah. or to do something that they don't have to do. You know, that I think that's a, that's a big part of it because a lot of people uh, only do things that, you know when they when they have an incentive when they getting paid for the, exactly you know which is which I think um, I think the science of that is really a loss is almost getting like a lost art um, you know back in the day it was normal but nowadays it's, it's just like like I said you got it's kind of got to be incentivized so like I said we just showing that example man going out there letting people know hey we're not being paid to be out here nobody's giving us nothing this is just a love mission man you want to end hate you got to come with love so um, it's just a step in a positive direction. That's what's up, man. That's oh, what's yeah. Up. On some of these, um, I've seen you some of these protests in, in the city mm -hmm. regarding uh, some of these stores um, shooting mm -hmm. of um, black people in in the area and, and, and what such. Um, so, what what do you suggest that we do or the youth do out here to um, combat this problem in our neighborhood uh, with these store owners, with the disrespect of the women, the disrespect of uh, us in general? What do you suggest? Or um, do people action? Um, I mean, me, me personally, I, 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 the, the biggest part of it, man, is education. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that 
each individual that that we, we won't start to see a real change bro um until each individual starts to take it personal um i think in the 60s and the 70s because the tone and in the, the, the air and the, the the times was a little different every individual person took it serious to where that's why you hear you you hear stories of people who may have walked 20 miles to get to work because they was that serious about the Montgomery bus boycott. Mm -hmm. You know, to where you hear everybody got a story. Everybody's grandmama, everybody's mama who was around, and even if you talk to those elders, they all got a, stu a story of struggle. You know what I mean? And they might not have been a, a proclaimed civil rights activist. However, it was just a part of it. Like, it, you, you, wasn't, you wasn't not living that then in that, in that time and all this was going on and you wasn't getting involved. So I think each, each individual has to come to a point to where it's serious to you and then where each individual takes it serious enough to say, yo, okay, for an hour out of my day, I'm going to dedicate this hour to educating somebody that I don't know, that may be from random, you know, that i never seen, i never met a day in my life, but I'm just going to pass some positive information on to them or I'm going to pass this information on to them or I'm, I'm going to stop this young brother on the corner and talk to him for an hour and make it my point that I'm gonna talk to X amount of people for X amount of time, and I'm gonna share this information. Um, and I, I think steps just as small as that, man, can make the can make the biggest difference, you know. Because what we find is, man, the, the the work will always get done. It's just it's just about keeping people in the mix that pe of people that want to get consistent. Mm -hmm. And the only way people get in the mix is the people gotta find the knowledge, you know. Right. Hey, you on that. Going on. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, how you think with the with the youth right now, um, uh, being in a, a non caring, um, carrying themselves in a non caring fashion right now is on a high high um, uh, alert right now. What do you suggest for the youth right now to get involved in the people's action? Or, you know, what I'm saying, how can they contact you, or oh, how can they come they to could, some of um, these functions or protest or whatever? The best way, just like um, I think with any with any uh progressive youth movement right nowadays is going to be social media uh instagram facebook we got the people's action on instagram the people's action on facebook on youtube um contacting myself minister freedom on facebook mm -hmm. uh uh you know our president negus vu on facebook instagram you can always set us up and just coming out man um i think that a lot of times especially a lot of young people that get involved is real empowering because they they never seen nothing like that you know, so when you're doing something that, that you've never seen, it's always a real big impact. So I would just encourage them, the man, to come out. And, um, you know, another thing that they can do, man, is just where they at. You know, we, 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 what our goal is is to create this Adopt a, adopt a Block program mm -hmm. throughout the city of Detroit, you know. And the goal is not for us to go and be cleaning up your community for you, but for us to inspire you and to teach you how to clean up your community yourself, you know. Okay. Like, one thing I'll be saying, um, even when I be out there talking to people, like, you know, should, and nobody else, should, it should make you feel bad that somebody else got to come to your house and clean up. Yeah, sure. Right. You know, you ever had somebody come to your house and they just start picking stuff up or washing dishes for you or, you know, they, you should feel like, well, damn, okay, it's time for me to clean up. You know, somebody else got to come clean my house. And it's that, it's, that tame, it's, that, it's that same type of feeling, you know, and I say that to people. I say that out in the community. Yo, we adopting this block right now. And when we, meaning when we adopt it, you are family now. So when you become our family, you look out for your family. You take care of them. You clean up after them. You do what he's supposed to do, you know. However, after that, man, we wanna we wanna get it to where people uh to where it becomes back normal to take pride in your community. Yeah, to cut your grass, you gotta uh, clean up. You know, I suggest that too. And I'm in my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Um, just take care of the block. Yeah. And if it, if you can take care of one block, then the next block going on. Take care of your neighborhood. Absolutely. Because what you most people will clean up, they will, will cut their yard. But won't cut the, the three abandoned houses on their yeah, block. Yeah, right, right. Next to you. The house right. next to you. Okay. And to tell you, man, that ain't my problem. That's the city problem. And, you know, all the city needs kids to Kids got to still that. play in that. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Our kids still got to play in that. Our people still got to walk past that every day. What we, we've got to understand is it's our community. Yeah. That's why you don't see that type of stuff in Dearborn. You don't see that type of stuff in Farmington. Because they not having it. You know what I mean? Even even in the even when it's snow time, that's one thing I get them Arabs. Man, they shovel their own side streets. Yeah. Well, with some yeah, with, with some of these um, uh, political uh, people that's in the 
in the city of Detroit. Um, would you uh, help hold them accountable for some of these vacant homes that's in the neighborhoods, uh, some of these grass that are owned by the city that's not cut? What do you do to get on some of these city leaders that's behind some of these uh, abandoned homes still sitting where kids playing in, in, in neighborhoods? Mm -hmm. What did you um, suggest for that? Man, we put them on blast. You know, um, when it, one thing about them, the big one of the big, what we do too as an organization, we do a lot of canvassing. Um, we do a lot of you know work with pop, with political officials, you know, and those are the issues that we bring up. You know, those are the issues that we bring up after we help register people to vote. Those right. are the issues that we bring up after we do our tax our tax uh, foreclosure exemption workshops. Those are the things we bring up when we do our entrepreneurial workshops. So the, the thing is just being able to put it out there. You know, those are the hot button issues that we talk about when it's August. You know, th those are when we put pressure on them. Um, and and at, at, you know, what we can, you can only expect another person to do so much for you. You mm -hmm. know? Right. Uh, so I know I, I, I live by the teachers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, man. He taught us to talk. He always taught to do for self, you know? So not only do we put pressure on the politicians, not only do we bring that up, not only do we let them know how many registered voters that we have, but we still do it ourselves. Yeah, you know? right, right. And while we're doing it ourselves, we're collecting data, we're taking pictures, we're marking down exactly how many abandoned houses that they are, you know, so that when it comes time for the people to get those bids or to get those resources that the city provides to actually clean up the houses, we could put our name in the pool and show them, hey, we're already doing the work. Right. Um, so it's just about, man, working on all fronts, man. Put your pressure on them and still do it. You know, don't put all, we don't want to put all the eggs in one basket. Well, do you suggest, like, well, some of the, some of these um, politicians, um, we should start getting our own youth youth in there yeah. and um, taking over some of these offices because what I see out there is a lot of these um, politicians is abandoning um, the, the particular inner city and when you go downtown and when you go to midtown certain districts even on grand river and that's being gentrified um it seems like they don't care about the rest of the um the city the city right yeah you know? so right. should we start putting our own or help holding them accountable during election time which is coming up right now for, for like, your own neighborhoods right yeah, yeah i the mean district. i i definitely i definitely think that that's that that's definitely that that's a solution putting pressure on them but it's just that what what the what history has shown us, man, that the majority a lot of times they'll do they'll do stuff for us and, until it's until after they get voted in. You know, they yeah. only they only got the reach to do so much. You know, they they only you know, don't get me wrong, they're they're polit they polit they politicians, I do think they got power and they got influence. I just think we might get a little bit further by getting with the the black owned local lawn care services. Cause that's one thing we do. When we do our Dr. Block, Block program, um, a lot of times we'll reach out to, you know, the local lawn care services and people who may got those resources already and who still love their community and do it. And they'll add on. They'll add on their services for the hour, you know, to where we able that if we can. I feel like in the black community, man, we got everything we need already. It's just not working together. Yeah, yeah we got yeah, skilled, yeah, skilled people everywhere. Resources and yeah. shit. It just won't. Well, we won't work together, right? We gotta stick together. That's the name of the game. Man. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, because anytime you can have um, other cultures and other people come over to this country, I mean, I'm not particularly the Arabs, or particular the Africans come over there and and work together with their own community, but we so uh, can't get along right now. It's, it's damaging to us and the community, and you, it's showing right now. And we see all of our, you know, the voids uh, that we have in our community being filled by other cultures, and we are. Uh, you know, fueling here. it, we're right. fueling it. You know what I mean? And we need to be, we need to have uh, positions in some of those spots where you know, in areas where we need. Well, things. I also think we need some <coughs> some youth in there right now. We have a lot of the politicians that's older and need to pass the torch. Oh yeah, as far as uh, politicians yeah, and, 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 and some of these offices too. You know what because I'm saying? Because lame, right, you really lame. can't get in contact with some of these people. They want to pass cards. You know what I'm saying? So what I suggest is. Let's start getting involved in some of this political process that's going on, yeah. and vote, let's take right. over some of these offices with with some of our, us. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's, it's a disconnect right there between the youth and the older community right now, and and it's and it's a growing problem right now in the city. That's what right? Well, yeah. I think it's I think it's happening, because um, even when I studied the, the political scene, you know, a lot of these older 
uh, incumbents, a lot of these older candidates and people that's been around in the game for a while, they starting to, you know, I'm not going to say they literally dying off, but they starting to slowly get out the game. You know, you're starting to see a lot more younger. And, and some of them are dying off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they just, they, they just yeah, they they get tired, old. Right. You know, they old. They old. They They is, man. And, and what you're starting to see is the progression of positive, young, black candidates who's strong. Was up. Somebody turn that phone volume down. Make sure it wasn't mine. Um, what I was just saying is, you're starting to see a lot of young, uh, black, progressive, strong candidates. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Brothers like Mark Payne. You know what I mean? That's that's young, that's strong, that's vibrant, that's well studied. Uh, the brother he running for he, he running for Congress right now makes a strong candidate. You got a lot of strong. I, I meet him all the time. You know the young brother out there in um I want to what's that Inkster he he was like one of the youngest uh, city council members yeah yeah I see oh, him yeah, 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 yeah strong brother strong young brother and it's a lot of them you know we got a lot of strong sisters that's running for good positions you know what I mean like I said my brother Mark Payne very good strong candidate but he young man you know I I think it's coming we just gotta Get be be we gotta be in tune you know I think a lot of our people in a big a big part they just not in tune we don't know. Know you know, right. most people wait until August fourth, August third to look at the ballot. Look at the ballot instead and figure of figure out who these people are and what right. they're about. Instead of getting in tune early, in, right. or most people just circling one side of the ballot, just circling red or blue. You know yeah. what I mean? So if we can, especially us adult, uh again, like I said earlier, it falls on the responsibility of those that's in the know to make sure we let people know who are the young candidates, who are the candidates that's that the represent candidate. the future. Right. Yeah, and they can go out and make an informed decision. Well, we got a uh, comment from Brian Dawkins that said, I cut the grass all the time for the house next door, but I'm getting tired of doing it. What well, did you suggest that, that the people right now has been cutting the grass or has been cleaning up their neighborhood? And um, it, it seemed like it's an ongoing thing. They're not, like, it, they not getting nothing up out of it. Well, uh, one thing that I, I suggest that we talked about a while, man, that I think it's, it's time to start doing is to start putting pressure on these community organizations. You got a lot of you got a lot of neighborhood block clubs, man. That's you know getting funding, that's getting resources, mm -hmm. uh, that's getting different things from the city, and they really not doing nothing, man. You know, so I think it, it's got to come a time where a new group of people start new neighborhood block, new neighborhood associations, new neighborhood block clubs, and start to organize, organize in these communities, get the signatures organizing the citizens and going to the older community block clubs. Hey, man, y'all don't help us get this thing together, man. We're going we gonna to put somebody else in here, you know, because I, I think that's where the power lies. The power lies in the people. And there are, there are systems in place that are designed to get communities these resources. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But what, what we have is we got people... Um, you know, I don't know if y'all remember remember uh, Pokemon back in the day, but you got these organizations that's like Snorlax. They sitting in front of the door, just being lazy, just not letting nobody through. You know what I mean? And they they holding the keys, they holding the resources, they holding all that. You know, and they, and they throwing block a block party once or twice a year to appease the community, man. And really, that's not what yeah, it's for. Yeah, that's not enough. I right. Mean... The neighborhood block association was so was organizations that was developed to to organize and develop the community and develop the infrastructure of the community say hey we need a park hey it's a abandoned structure right, over here right, in the community right, right. hey the community needs this hey we need some support on the schools or whatever so there, there's become a lack in the organization when you look back 40 and 50 years ago these were vibrant neighborhood, thriving yeah. not only the neighborhoods the organizations yeah. were thriving back in the day yeah. thriving right, right. Oh, yeah. thriving Beautiful. thriving thriving organizations and the communities thrive so it, it, you have to be able to see the correlation, okay? The communities have no leadership. The communities look like fall. garbage. Right. So you're saying we should get on the uh, yes. block club president? Yes. It's, it's, it's not. It's just, it go back, man, to what Stokely Carmichael said, man. If you, that, if you care about your people, get in the organization. If you're not organizing on some level, that, that's the key to life. You know what I mean? And whatever that, whatever you do in every, in every profession or anything like that, there's a level of organization. Whether you're gonna call it networking, whether you call it your team or whatever, there has to be some. There's an organization. The community is not no different, you know. And I, and I think that's where that's where the break is happening. 
to where the young people they not they not being organized. Yeah, they not they not joining none of these um, organizations. Like you said, and taking over some of these offices either. And the thing is, not necessarily just joining, but how many times have they been asked to become a part of an organization? Yeah. Most of the young people, the only people asking them to get down is the Crips and the Gangs, Bloods. Yeah. Gangs, right. Yeah. But are the neighborhood organizations stepping to the young people? Hey, young man, you know, I think you. You, you got good work ethics. Da, 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 da. What would you think about a leadership position and helping to lead your community or the political organization stepping to the young people? Because e even in my history of organizing, people are eager to work. They just don't know where to look for the work. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And, 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 and everybody loves a leader to be in. A, everybody wants a position. Right. It's just that they don't know how to get in those positions. You know what I mean? And, and you, you, no motivation. Right. Study successful organizations. Man, they organize. Study the Jehovah Witnesses or the Mormons. They get out and they organize. They never have breaks in their membership. They always got dedicated people hitting the streets because they organize. They get out. They shake hands. They invite people. They talk to people. Even the, one of the most successful religious organizations in the world right now, the Church of Scientology, man, they get out and they talk to people. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you see them everywhere. <laughs> they they have a lot. They talk. A lot of recruiters. They shake hands. Better, better they known, give out yeah. information. They give out pamphlets. Hey, come in. We're giving a Talking free whatever. Yeah, come. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Let's get in. Seriously, it's the law Shut of averages, up, yeah. bro. If you don't never ask, you can't be mad when you don't have the numbers. If you're not asking, you're right. That's right. You're right. That's why I feel like it's a disconnect right now between some, like you said, some of these uh, foundations and some of these. Uh, political um, people yeah, and yeah. Uh, we have to figure out how can we better join each other or you know get together the youth and the old because it's like you said it's a, it's it's a disc disconnect right now and it's, it's I don't know is uh, both sides scared of one another I don't know what it is you know what I'm saying but it is a disconnect between the two right now and that's just my opinion what I see out there you know what I'm saying like you said you don't have no one um, coming up to you to the youth Asking them to join. They don't have no leaders. You yeah, know. they have they no have leaders. Nobody, nobody to wants up. to step right, to them. Yeah, you know nobody, what I'm saying? You know, so, no role models to look up to, not for you know, the but, comments besides gotta, rappers. And, you know. Reading the comments, we got another uh, comment here from uh, uh, Mecca C. Freedom Earth. She say, uh, also set up gardens in every neighborhood and teach the youth how to grow their own food. Pick, pick a designated right. backyard or plot a, a land and, and get it done. I mean, that's, I guess, another idea that was go, going towards. Well, a lot of that was going on over there. Um Across last year in the, in the um, Rafford area, in like the um, it's the part of Detroit is like a Rafford area. Yeah, yeah. They was taking these lots, cleaning them up, and farming on them. You it know was a saying? farm right off of seventy five and seven mile. Little do people know, like in oh, between yeah, six and seven there. mile. Like, you know what I mean? Man, on the north I mean, end, close I, over that way. Right, right. All they do is just grow. I remember back in the day, uh, you know, every every house in the back, only in, uh, on the block in the backyard had a, a, fr a fruit tree of some kind, mm -hmm. you know, for a vine yeah, tree, or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pear trees and apple trees and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I plant trees myself. Believe we, it or not, know. people, I read a statistic not too long ago that, that talked about how Metro Detroit has the largest concentration of urban gardens in the country. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that we got that. You know, we got a good a good hold on that. We just got to kind of bridge the gap, man. I, I think the biggest problem, both sides are a little too prideful. The old is too prideful to come off they, off they pedestal and say, hey, young man, listen, I've been watching you. I want to give you the game, and a lot of the, a lot of times the young be too proud for the listen. Yeah, you know it all already. Right. <sighs> However, nevertheless, bro, what I will say is is that um, it ain't for everybody. Right. It's right. not. Many right. are called, but only few are right. chosen. Right. It's yeah. for the chosen ones, and only the chosen ones to be blessed. Still got to put the word out. Right? Yeah. 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 And the, the chosen ones, like my educator. One of the great brother, one of the greatest brothers I've met, my man Doctor Bahu, even like he told me, the chosen ones choose themselves. Yeah. So it's just about making a choice. You know what I mean? I know I've made that choice, and I've been blessed because of it. I just would encourage others to make that choice. You know? Yeah, what I get mean? involved in your neighborhood. Get involved, and in, you know something that's positive right now. Because, you know, there's movements popping up all over the country right now. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. Black movement is on the rise right. and yeah. consciousness is on the rise. Want to mm -hmm. be involved, right? You know. So is so is anti black movement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's on the rise too. At a rapid war on rate, you know what I'm saying? So you know, right now we're living in times to where you have to pay attention. 
and you have to also participate in your neighborhood and let's come together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. well, you know, that's the best um, thing to do, man. Yeah, I mean, just everybody just work together, like you say, I mean, be involved in the community. You can't go wrong. I mean, yep. you know, either that man or we can continue on the path that we continue in. That's the choice we gotta make. Yeah, we gotta choose. It's gotta come a point. We gotta choose between life and death. You know, um, sadly, but it's it's the truth. And so, um, any um, empowerment programs you have for the brothers and sisters and um, out there that's going on through um, people's um, action? Well, to, um, I know, I know. We, we, you know, like I said, the Adopt the Block program. Okay. Uh, we got our entrepreneur workshop coming up in October. We just did one not too long ago to, uh, to where we had different entrepreneurs, different speakers. Uh, we have uh, business startup resources, teaching people how to start their business, teaching people how to get their EIN number. We actually had somebody on site that was doing it for everybody. You know, they'd come help you get your EIN number, uh, start your company, whether you're going to be an LLC or incorporation or whatever way you go, give you the proper documents, the proper paperwork, the way you could do that. Um, not to mention, like I said, motivational speakers had myself, uh, Dr. Ken Harris, man, a, a few other people. They came out and spoke and gave some, some real, real positive wisdom. Those vendors there, uh, all type of black business and stuff. So, you know, I know that's that's definitely one thing. Um, not to mention, too, man, um, not, you know, aside from the People's Action Committee, man, the, the 5% Nation, um, we have our, our Universal Parliament every third Sunday of the month. Um, so that's something, man. That's, that's, Where is that lo located? Well, right now, man, we're gonna be out. We're gonna be outside. Um, okay. So I don't, I don't know if we, if I got a park location just yet. Last month we was on 14th in Glendale. However, you know, if, you, if anybody wanna wanna check us out and get more information about that, you can hit me up on Facebook and Instagram, Minister Freedom, or uh, you can hit us up on uh, the Five Percent Connection page on Instagram. But you know, that's for people. You know, you may be even if you're not interested in learning the teachings of the Five Percent Nation or Nation of God's and Earth, man, you can still come learn, share the information that you have. If you got knowledge or information that you may want to add on, and we could just chop it up and build and you know learn from each other, man. It's definitely you know that's what it's, that's what it's all about. Okay. Uh, and so for so, the people who might not know the five percent, can you explain a little? Uh, the the other? five percent, man, uh, is a nation. Um, of positive thinkers, man, and brothers and sisters, particularly the youth, man, that was started in 1964 out in Harlem. Um, and that is something that was started from the mind of the Nation of Islam. You know, our father, who we know, we call, whose name was Allah, he left the Nation of Islam in 1963 um, and took the teachings to the youth. You know, basically, you know, in the Nation of Islam, they have what's called what's the restrictive law. Uh, meaning that, you know, you have to adhere to certain guidelines to be a part mm -hmm. of their nation, of their organization. Um, however, what Allah knew was that those same teachings and those same life-giving teachings that uh, brought to life people like Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad and, you know, did all the greatness that it that it did, he realized that those same teachings needed to be taught, needed to be brought uh, to the, dis to the dis disfranchised youth in the streets of Harlem and that nobody was going to teach them. Because they weren't going to stop smoking. They weren't going to stop drinking. That they wanted to hang out in gambling halls and dice dens. And he took the knowledge itself to them. The people that society said weren't going to never be nothing. You know, and he taught those teachings. He taught his teachings to the youth, man. To, you know, and it, it just, uh, it's been educating and uplifting brothers and saving and giving life to brothers and sisters ever since. It's know, also required like a strict diet or something like too. No, no pork, right? Yeah, well, I mean, pork. Not eating pork is not just a diet of the five percenters of the nation of Islam. That's the diet of the righteous. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, that's that's a, that's something that's prescribed all across righteous teachings all across the world. Whether that's Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, um, all those all of those schools of thought prescribe not eating of the pork because it's just an unclean animal. Um, so you know we just we like, like I said we prescribe what we teach is that we don't we don't teach religion. We're not a religion, nor are we a gang or anything like that. We teach that Islam is a natural way of life, that a person can live Islam, that Islam is mathematics, mm -hmm. that everything in the universe practice uh, live Islam, which just means peace, you know. So we, we just teach that in a natural way of life, man. And, uh, you know, our teachings is just based off righteousness. You know, we teach that that man and woman, that the black man and the black woman are the original mothers and fathers of civilization. That's right. Um, and we teach that our science which is called the supreme mathematics is the man's keys to understanding his relationship to the universe. 
as mathematics is what the universe is, is made up of so that a supreme understanding of those mathematics can help guide a person throughout life. We call ourselves the 5% because we teach that 85% of people are dumb, deaf, and blind and don't really know what's going on in the world. They uncivilized, they worship that which they know not, and they easily in the wrong direction but hardly in the right direction. We teach that 10% of people who are the rich slave makers that they had a knowledge and they used the knowledge to mislead the people. You know, which would be your 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 white so-called white supremacists, your elitist groups, uh, what people call the Illuminati, or whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Which just represent the elite. We know that 90% of the world's money is controlled by 1% of the population. So we just call them the 10%. Which leave us, the 5%, who are the few, uh, to teach the 85%, to lead our people in righteousness, that we poor righteous teachers. We're not looking to make money or to make slaves or to make followers. We're just looking to teach our people freedom, justice, and equality. You know, um, and it's something, honestly, it's something that's been passed from mouth to ear, man. You know, over this past time. That's why you see it kind of spawned and created hip hop. Um, you know, but that's that's like, you know, something brief. And, and not, all, not only that, we also teach that, we don't teach a, about a, what's called a mystery God, meaning that we don't say that it's some magical being floating around in the sky controlling our reality. We teach that the black man is God and that the black man is the originator and the or, 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 origin of all living mm -hmm. and all things in existence, you know? Um, and we teach that on the streets, man. We teach on the street corners. We, you know, we did uh, have our school. We in the process of getting another building, but that's just where we at, man. We in the worst places in the hills of North America. Some of us are dressed bad. Some of us are, you know, college up, upbeat, you know, with suits and ties, but we just here to teach the people, man. That's yeah. good, man. That's yeah, good. With, with, um, uh, back to the people action with some of the demands that you demand out of some of these stores. Uh, can you tell the people why some of these demands um, that you put forth for uh, some mm -hmm. of the owners uh, of these stores in our neighborhood that, mm -hmm. that um, people actions put on these stores? Um. I know for like one example I can give uh, just uh, recently, man, uh, um, it's a gas station. Uh, what's that? Six in Southfield. Six in Southfield. I was about to say seven in Southfield. Yeah, Derek. Derek. Mm -hmm. Leon. The brother, the brother Derek, Derek Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, he was shot and killed uh, unarmed uh, in the gas station by the, by the store. On Mother's Day. Yes, he was on oh, Mother's man. Day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the brother, you know, they, they got in a, a, verbal, a verbal, verbal argument. Um, from my understanding, over something small, you know, I, I don't understand what can be so big that's worth a man's life. Um, you know, however, he shot, he shot and killed that brother, and we, you know, we just brought the community out. You know, we was able to bring out different community leaders, the church leaders, uh, church organizations, other community organizations, other what they call conscious organizations. Um, some city officials, some Congress people, city council members, you know, came out and added on with the work. Um, and just the demands that we made, man, was, you know, it was it was a lot of them. That they was to pay restitution to the family. Um, we demanded that, you know, that these Arabs and these store clerks, man, start to go under what's the, what they would call community sensitivity classes. Meaning that you got people coming in our community that don't know nothing about us, man. That all that they know is the image of black people is what they done learned off TV and BET, bro. Yeah, right, you know, and they get over here, and they they looking at us like that, like we like we fools, like they don't understand. Problems. They got this, yeah, they got right. this 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 look of fear in their face. You know, they automatically scared of us because of how the media portray us that we just that we all thugs, that we all killers. And, you know, and meanwhile, these. we the nicest and most graceful people on the face of the planet Earth, man. That's and, right. You know, it's nobody with a with a pure with a pure energy man and than our people. You know, we we with, I don't I don't even understand why even I be talking to these Arabs a lot of times, and I have to, I have to sensitize them, man. You know, and that's and I was one of the ones we we suggested that man to where we sit them down, literally train them and educate them on the language, on the norms, on the 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 cultural the the cultural differences. And how we are, how we relate, how we're the same. You know, I think that's that's where a big break is to understanding where we come together. You know what I mean? Um, to where they can understand how to be more sensitive. I think uh, they're very insensitive to the the mental breakdown 
and the mental, the many mental, dis mental disorders that our people suffer from that they just don't understand. You know what I mean? That they that they may not understand when it's like coming up in the community where a lot of people have to make decisions between food and medicine. Yeah. They don't understand what it's like living in a community where people who may have slid their life off and, and now they're into drugs and, you know, they just can't turn back and they just stuck. They just stuck there, man. They don't understand. You know, and a, and a lot of times, man, I have to level. I have, you, It takes us leveling with them. I hear them all the time talking to our people crazy and I stop them. Yo, hold it, my man. Where you from? Oh, I'm from Palestine. Oh, okay. Why are you talking to us like you you for you for you are Israeli? I don't understand. Why are you talking to our people like that, brother? We from the same place. Yeah. And they they get this look on their face. Oh, oh, brother. I, my man, you a Muslim? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, brother, why do you disrespect the children of the prophet like this, brother? We all from the same place. Yeah, we all fighting the same you cause. Know? Man, you and, know, and yeah. you know, then when you talk Lost to them like when you talk to them like that, oh, I'm sorry, brother. I'm I'm the Lord. You know, they, they ready to be, be your best friend now, you know? Uh, so I, I just think it's, it's, you know, that was one of the demands we made, community sensitivity, man. Um, we demanded that they pay some restitution to the family and pay some of the funeral costs, which they did. Mm -hmm. uh, we demanded that they that they business stay closed, which they still are. Yeah, I think um, I rolled past this, like, a, they changing the name or they digging it up um, or something over there. Probably. I know well, they, it's not open. You know. Well, they're selling it. Um, we were in the process. I know a few brothers and sisters was working to try to buy it, um, to to you know keep it for our, for our communities. Um, but I mean that's 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 ultimately what it is, man. We got to start punishing them. We have to. The power is in the people. They don't oh, have the, people, the power. Yeah. You know, it's no you you can no longer be allowed to come in our community and just act a certain type of way. It has to be consequences. It has to be whether that they. That's why things like the Montgomery bus cop was so was so powerful, was so important. People don't understand. Back in those times, the the bus system was probably one of the Montgomery's biggest revenue sources. So you stop it, and it, it it changes everything. You force them to comply. We have to get in that same mode. It's too many gas stations, man. We don't have to go to yours. We yeah. don't have to come power to the black store. dollar. There it first is. of all, black snow business. There it is. Yeah. You know, power the black dollar. Pocket. Yeah. Yeah. If you're getting disrespected, don't go. We have to keep him. We have to remember. We make up seventy percent of the money in the city of Detroit. Period. It's no. It's no way. It's no going around us. Right. It's no going through us. We the only way we can better. let a person get by is if we let them get by. But if we really make it up in our minds and really make a determined effort that we're not gonna do business with you, man, we we will see changes overnight. We will see. We will see changes overnight. Shut man. down. It, 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 will, it would be like It's like a wave man I mean I, Even you know Doing things Even when I done, did things When I was working With New York Detroit man, we, we would do things And other stores Other gas stations People would see my face And they would act A different type of way Because they knew They seen it Yeah we have to be serious When we're dealing with These owners nowadays There's no more games We have to play We've been playing games Too long and, you know, I think you we know, do have to be serious to the fact. Yeah, it's yeah. funny that he brings that up, up, man, because uh, it's a liquor store locally right here in the neighborhood, man, that uh, when I go in there, he, he kind of got like an ongoing running joke with me. Like, you know, <laughs> I ain't going to do nothing. Don't bring your boys up here, you know what I mean? <laughs> they follow, you know, the YouTube and all of that stuff, so they see and they know who I am. Just like you Major said. presence, say. right, yeah. Exactly, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's, it's like they know, you know what I mean? Yeah, they know you ain't playing no They don't know who to mess with. Once the message is out there, you know what I mean, as far as, uh, you know, this is the, the protocol and how, how to act and how not to act, you know, the message will get, get spread quick, you know what I mean? So that's, you know, that's truth to what he said as far as that goes, man. You know, you just got to set the example. We keep letting them do it. We keep letting them do it. Yeah, you, you have the mean business. Coming back and patronizing them, you know what I mean? Not, you know. And it don't take an organization to do it. You know what I mean? I know no. a lot of brothers that did it without an organization. And that just was on their own. You know, they might have been the you. It's a lot of us. That's just the man. You might be the man in your, in your, in your block. The individual. And right. got that much pull to where you can stand in front of the store. No, nah, bro. Uh-uh. <clears throat> No, nope. nobody's going in here right now. All it take, bro, is really one dedicated person. <laughs> Real talk. One individual, yeah. All it take is one brother who really bought yeah. that action, and who really bought that. Who gonna stand there? Yeah. And when the police come, gonna tell them, "No, nah, I'm peacefully protesting. I ain't moving. 
we standing here, we in protest, we in demonstration to the store, da 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 da, I'm not going for it. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, cause we, 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 we have to understand that we are at war. And if we don't treat it like that, man, you know, we, we gotta get results, you know? Um, a, a, a cold war at least. Okay. Yeah, well, I call it in a war right now in the city of Detroit. Then it's in a war for our land. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's being gentrified at, at a rapid rate right now, and you know, a lot of people is in the mass exodus of the city. So you see a lot of things going on um, in different parts of the of the city. That's you know you're like whoa, you know what I'm saying? They's trying to shut it down. So you know what yeah. I'm saying? And it's a lot of factors contributing to that. It's a it's a forced exodus, man. It's forced it's forced gentrification. It's a it's a it's a lot of people that's moving out the city, just because they can't afford insurance. Yeah, right. right. Insurance, right. Right. man. Okay. Insurance. I just just got my daughter a car, man. It's like uh, two hundred and three hundred something dollars for no fault. And what teenager can afford that? <laughs> Not to mention full coverage. Like by trade, I sell I sell cars. I sell cars. Um, I was recently, most recently, I was down there at Big Three Auto Sales. Probably one of the best black owned. Uh, used car dealerships in the city right on 8, eight Mile and uh, Kelly but you know one of the biggest problems one of the biggest issues that you have to overcome especially with helping our people finance a vehicle and get a car note is getting insurance, insurance. it's crazy yeah insurance is more than it's a car note it's crazy you want to get it. yeah. it's crazy and you have to you really to the point to where you have to ask a person do you have an address outside the city right on Just average out, if you're right. living in Detroit your insurance is about to be a lease. They at least want a, 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 they want most companies like Progressive and Insurance, they want half the policy up front if you live in Detroit. Mm. Right. That's a shame. So say if this is, this say this might be a $1,600 a year policy or $2,000 a year policy. That's a thousand dollars, that's a thousand dollar down payment, $800 down payment. You know what I mean? Which is which is crazy. It's no other place in the it's country that's like that. No other place no, in the I country. I live in Ohio. I think it's like a hundred and something, two hundred bucks for full coverage. Come on, man. In this man, in the city. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But that's in know. Cleveland. <laughs> it's Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah so ridiculous. you know what I'm saying? They, that's they, terrible. They actually robbing Detroit. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Pushing us out. out like you pushing said, us right? out. Pushing us out, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So from that to the Houses. completely unethical uh water shut off practices yeah. the completely unethical DT. you know you're talking about the largest foreclosure auction in this country's history never before seen this many houses foreclosed than in the city of detroit yeah people i remember was buying like 10 and 20 at one time right and a yeah, lot of those yeah. still had people living in them yeah yeah it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? It was the start here. They started, this was the example. And the people mm -hmm. that bought for, for other uh, cities. The right. yeah. <laughs> they bought from another state and buying all the houses up. Exactly. Not even here. They're charging our people eight, nine hundred dollars mm -hmm. for rent. And now, what they're doing, what's happening is, big money, institutional money, is building condos and building subdivisions in Redford, in Canton, in... Dearborn and all the little surrounding areas and all our people are going out there. That's where they're going. Canton, Inkster. They're making it affordable out there. <laughs> yep. Because what they knew was they were buying the land in Inkster and Ecorse and Canton and, you know, Down River and Taylor and all that stuff three years ago when the property was dirt cheap. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it's a mean, it's a mean cycle, man. And it ain't just here. It's D.C., you know, I was in I was in L.A. Uh, last week, man, and you know, Washington South Central's you know got white folks walking around. And I mean, you know, that's yeah, what people I hear. Compton is it's like half of it's gentrified. I, it's, I de hear. it's definitely gentrified. Even that's what we was bugging out. We was in we was in say that my man was telling me like, man, South Central looked like you know Venice Beach. <laughs> <laughs> and you they know, pushed beautiful. them off into the hills. <laughs> right. Wow. It's a changeover. Mm hmm Yeah, it ain't just here, man. It's just. It's just the time, you know, you know, and I mean, it's just, we, we just got to be in tune, man. We got to be able to see what's in it. And I mean, it, we all got it rough. You know, that's one of the things I've been working on, me and a few other brothers. I'm striving to uh, bridge this gap between the poor black people and the poor Latino community. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. These are our biggest allies, man, right next door. Who are going through probably the same, if not this is bad. Yeah, stuff over there in um, Mexican town, and, and back on on one part, they're trying to gentrify it and uh, move in and, and slowly kick them out with this new uh, bridge that they building too. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention Donald Trump, the Dreamer policy. Uh, you got tons and tons and top, hundreds of, hundreds of people getting deported. Hundreds of people who were born here getting pushed out of this country. You know, and they are they going through it, man. Right. You know, it's ill. It's a lot, man. But we, you know, I feel like if we can bridge that gap, man, and help and get with our people to help us, and we help them, and we right next door. But most black folks nervous about driving through Southwest, and most of the people in the Southwest don't drive through the hood. They don't. They don't come on the west, east. Yeah, cause I'm, you know, I'm from over there in Southwest. They don't, they really don't go on that side unless you're from over there. They don't, then they don't come on this side. You know, it's like nope. a disconnect. Like we don't go over there and we don't go over there. Nope. You know what I'm saying? We don't associate with each other. Meanwhile, they going through the same thing. We're going through the same, same thing. Same thing. Same, same issues. Wow. If wow. not worse. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. Same issues, man. You know, I, I, even when I was in, out in L.A., man, I, you know, it was eye-opening because I was able to meet brothers who really was real immigrants who i met a brother who had to leave uh, who had to leave south uh salvador uh el salvador uh had to leave countries like ecuador and uh, uh venezuela and different things like that man of violence poverty and they leaving 10 years old 12 years old you know coming over this country can't speak english don't know nobody you know what i'm saying and going through it bro we can support one another you know um uh, so that that's something Another little little side project I'm working on, man. I'm striving to link up with different activists in their community, you know, so they can be the bridge, man. Because um, it's going to take all of us to get through what it is we're going through. You're right. You know, that's why, I, I, you know, the five percenters, man, we're not anti-white, nor are we pro-black. It's going to take all of us. It's going to take everybody. It's going to take white people, black people, the native people, everybody, man, to get through what it is we're going through. Cause the people that's running this, they don't, they don't care about color. Right. They don't, man. It's white people got it bad, black folks got it bad. You know what I mean? I'm not putting nobody else over us. I'm just saying, we gonna need all the help we can get. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah. You, you know. Thanks for coming on, Strapping man. Up. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> Minister Freedom. You know, so as you see, you have a lot of knowledge. You know yeah, what I'm saying. <laughs> And so, uh, one more time, where can they get you on uh, social media uh, for the uh, Instagram? Uh, Instagram is real, uh, where I'm at more more than anything. I do be on Facebook though. Instagram at Minister Freedom. Uh, also, one of the administrators of the Five Percent Connection, which is the international and global platform for the Five Percent. Um, you know, you can get me on there. The People's Action, any of our events, any of our pages, man, you can definitely hit me up on there. Uh, People's Action on YouTube, Minister Freedom on YouTube, um, lectures. Uh, I do also do lectures. I do educational speaking, educational teaching, motivational speaking. Um, I do. I am, you know, do bookings and all that. So if you know that's something you're interested in, you could definitely hit me up on Instagram or send me an email, man. Mfreedom360 at gmail dot com. Okay. That's okay. Well, that's thanks for coming on, my brother. Yes, you sir. know what I'm saying. Yeah, I hope to see you around the city. You yes, know what I'm saying. Man. You know, so that's Truth Talk Radio. What's that's going it. on, Mark? Same old, same old, man. I'm just sitting back, uh, you know, absorbing the conversation for the most part. You know what I mean? I already know how this, how this brother come when he come, man. And, uh, you know, I've been on plenty of demonstrations and, uh, you know, marches with him, man. So, you know, you know, I, I, I know the brother, you know what I mean? And I, I know the work that he do. You Powerful know brother, man. And yeah. I know, you know, that he a uh, uh, man of his word, man, when it comes to being about the community and putting his foot, putting the, you know, boots to the ground, you know what I'm saying, as far as doing the work. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, ever since I met him, you know, he, you know, it's all he been about. So that's what it is, man. And uh, just look forward to all of the stuff that he got coming up, man, and all of the work that he's doing, you know what I mean, him and uh, people actually networking. You know, brother Nagas Vu over there, man, been, you know, doing some amazing things over there as well. So, you know, just like I said, man, just, it's just a pleasure to have these brothers in the community, man, in the city helping out putting this stuff together. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, check you know us out this Sunday, man. We're going to be on Joy Road uh, doing the, the Adopt a Block, man. We'll okay. be over there cleaning up. We, we take anybody want to volunteer, anybody want to add on. You Joy definitely Road, welcome. what area? Uh, Joy Road, I, I think Sussex. Let me look Let me look at the flyer real quick. Hold on okay. one second. I'm going to tell you. Yeah, but I do know the Joy Road in Southfield area. Let me give you the exact address. 
really yeah. quick. But it's this Sunday, man. We we definitely uh, many hands make light work, man. You know, right. if that's your hood, or if that's your area, anything like that, you definitely uh, you can come out and get it in with us on Sunday. We're gonna be on we're gonna be on uh, Rosemont and Joy Road. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna be at Rosemont and Joy Road. We starting at four. Uh, we're probably gonna be out there till about eight. So that's Joy Road and Rosemont. Um, we're gonna be on the whole. We're gonna we usually do about three blocks. So you know, if anybody wanna come out, help out, man. You got a lawnmower, you got a weed whacker, you got some gloves and some. You know, you wanna get it in and get come your get hands dirty, man. Yeah. Come get it that's in. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, then. Well, you know, that's Truth Talk Radio. Next week we got uh, more herbs coming in. Get your alkaline right here, and uh, that's basically. T Mizzle, you got anything to say? Hit me up. This T Mizzle, uh, the great on Instagram. T E E dot M I Z Z E L, the great. All right, all right, then. Well, I guess that's it. We see you next week. Same time, same place. Y'all, thank y'all for having me. All right, peace. Peace. Oh. Yeah, you are now tuned in to Seven Mile Radio. <laughs> Seven Mile Radio. Warning.